Hello, everyone. I'm Dave Robinson, Chief Data Scientist at DataCamp, and um, I'm going to be sharing some advice on live tweeting. So when Jared challenged me to give this talk about 40 minutes ago, uh, I had started to think about what kind of advice I might want to give to this group about live tweeting. And I'm able to give not only advice, but up-to-date literature review about the best practices for live tweeting. So first, the advice is that Twitter is easier than it looks. So usually people might be nervous. You might say, I don't know what this Twitter thing is. What am I going to do with it? And then once you try it out, you can find it can be really fun, really rewarding, and a great way to participate in the conference with everyone else. So you just, so I've had a lot of experience live tweeting. I found it a really great way to keep track of what I've done in a conference. So for example, in 2016, I went to some conferences, live tweeted them, and I was able to take those and assemble them into a blog post. That makes me really happy that I was able to keep track of these while I was going, and I'll share what I've learned. First, always make sure you use the conference hashtag. So here, that's hashtag rstatsnyc. And that also lets you compete on the leaderboards that they've been showing off. Always at the speaker. So always include an at in the speaker's um, screen uh, uh, Twitter handle. You'll notice that in the program, Jared has set up that every speaker has their handle in their description. And always include a picture. This is a practice that I really um, enjoy. It's great, especially great here where you have these screens around. You can include a screen very close up of, this, of the slide, or you can include a screen of the uh, speaker. And it's a really good way to get people that aren't at the conference to kind of feel like they're there, and it tends to get more engagement. Though I'll show some quantitative evidence about that later. Three things you could use to tweet about. One would be to introduce a person or a topic. So yesterday, for example, I introduced, uh, when David Smith started talking about Minecraft, I tweeted to say, I've been really looking forward to this. He's combined R and Minecraft and give a sense of what the talk's about. We can spread one insight from a talk. Like yesterday, Noam Ross talked about sharing data with an R stats package, and um, I took a picture of that slide and uh, kind of passed those on so people that aren't at the conference can understand a bit what he was communicating. Or you can link to an additional resource that the speaker might want people to read. This morning, Hadley gave a talk where he referred to his chapter of Advanced R on Names and Values. So I did a tweet that linked to that and lets people that maybe are either at the conference or following along can understand a bit more of the context around the talk. And one last piece of advice that I've really seen um, done really well this year is show off. And by that, I mean take something you're talented at and use it to enhance everyone's speak, um, speaking understanding. So Brooke Watson, if you're not seeing, seeing these tweets, they're really fantastic. She's a talented uh, 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 artist and note taker, and she makes a little summary of each combined with a profile of them. Uh, and they've been really a fantastic way to take something that she's talented at and use it to enhance everyone's experience of the conference. So if you're not following Brooke Watson, you definitely should. I just started yesterday. <laughs> so that's some qualitative advice, but it's always important to take a look at the literature, in particular, a randomized experiment. <laughs> Earlier, I said that it's better to include a picture and gets more engagement, but what does the actual like, scientific evidence say? So to do that, we take a look at Robinson and Robinson 2018, <laughs> where there were two tweets posted at almost exactly the same time by two tweeters where one of them didn't include a picture and one of them did. So it turned out it, it went a bit against the common consensus about pictures because there was, were 76 retweets on the one that didn't have a picture and 64 on the one that did. But of course, you can't just look at the original experiment. You need to look at the following scholarly discourse. In this case, we have a follow-up, Robinson 2018, uh, that, who pointed out that the original did not use an appropriate normalization metric. And we should have normalized by the number of followers. This was followed by a comment on Robinson 2018 along the lines of the fact that life isn't fair. And finally, of course, most importantly, we have peer review, where others that are involved in the space are able to give their own opinion <laughs> about this discussion. Thank you. <laughs>